Hello and welcome to the video. This is the first video in a short series titled Quadcopter Building for Beginners Winter 2023. Now I have done quite a few series of these already. You can link down below if you're interested to look at the old ones. But the technology has been refining and improving and making it easier to build a quad now than it's ever been. So I thought it was about time that I got some of the latest generation of equipment and we actually went through each of the individual steps. Now this video series is going to be aimed at those of you that have never built a quadcopter before. Even if you're not familiar with radio control, hopefully you should be following along because I'm going to show you every single step that I'm going to use to get this pile of pieces that's currently on my bench, a frame, flight controller, ESCs, motors, there's be a receiver, some FPV equipment and other pieces in here and put it all together so that it actually flies as a quadcopter. And I'll show you every single step and I'll explain why things are done in that particular way. Some of them are kind of legacy, some of them don't always make complete sense, but I'll explain it. Now, if you are familiar with radio control stuff and you know what a flight controller is, what a frame is, what a motor is, what a speed controller, you know the difference between an ESC and a BEC, then you can skip this video altogether and go to the next one in the series where we start putting it all in one piece. However, if you are new to this, then stay tuned. In this video, what I'm going to do is to show you each of the individual pieces, explain what function they perform in a modern multi-rotor or drone, and then go through why I've chosen that particular one. Now, before we go too far, I need to say a thank you to Drone Authority. Now, Drone Authority has been a shop that's been around for quite a while. However, it was bought and now has just been relaunched on the 1st of December 2023. Drone Authority is now a new invigorated version of what it was because the new owners have put in hundreds of thousands, many hundreds of thousands of pounds worth of stock behind the scenes to make sure that it has the majority of the stuff that we want and we need on a daily basis. So if you used to be a Drone Authority customer, go and check it out. It is now back, bigger, with more stock than ever before. But if you've never used Drone Authority and you use some of the other shops in the UK, go and check it out. Stock availability is going to be a big deal with these guys. They are ordering an awful lot of stuff and have a big warehouse behind this now. That means that when you need something desperately, you're going to be able to get it. So again, a big thank you to Drone Authority for supporting this. All the pieces that I'm going to build with have come from Drone Authority and I'll put links down below. So let's have a look at the individual pieces and which ones I'm going to use. First of all, let's talk about the frame. Now, there are lots of different designs of frame around, the different kind of big whoop styles, X's, compressed X's, loads of stuff. I would recommend if you've never built one before, go for something like this Speedy Bee M5 V2 frame. It's nice and large, it's well manufactured, and there's lots of room in here, so to get all the components in isn't going to be like a game of Tetris. There's enough room here to run off our cables and to easily get in here to do things like soldering, crimping and other things as well. So I'm going to use this Speedy B M5 V2 frame. There's lots of other choices but again when you're starting out I just pick something that's give, going to give you a little bit more room to get all the components in and give you a little bit more room for the pieces that we'll have to do as part of the build. Next thing then is the flight controller and speed controllers. Let's talk about the flight controller first. Now the flight controller ESC stack is this one here. This is the Speedy B F4 V4 55 stack. It's actually two boards together. The top board is the flight controller. This is essentially a little computer that also have a number of sensors on board, accelerometers and gyros that will feel movement in three dimensions. And that allows it, with the information that it's receiving from the radio that's in your hands, to be able to make sure the drone does exactly what you're asking of it. It's going to run something like beta flight typically and will flash beta flight onto this. Most flight controllers like this will come with some kind of software or firmware as it's called because it's kept in memory here on the flight controller so even when you unplug it it stays around but that firmware is typically out of date that comes supplied on it so we're going to have to update it and configure it and we'll do that in this series. The board that's underneath it this part here is the ESCs. This is called a 4-in-1 ESCs. These pads on the corners, these four sets of three pads, are what the motors are going to be soldered onto on each of the arms. 
The ESC's job is to take the power from the battery and to then send it out to the motors to make them turn at the speed that you want. And the ESCs are very clever little things in their own right, another little computer. They're also sensing the position of the motors and firing the phases one after the other. It's really smart stuff. Now, you can either have it like this, where it's in one little board that's going to sit underneath the flight controller in the build, or the other way that used to be done a lot was to have the ESCs out on the arms, like in this picture. Now, that was the way that we used to do it. Lots of people like that, because if an ESC is damaged in a crash, then you only have to replace that one on the arm. With the 4-in-1 ESC that we're using now, this is going to be a lot neater in terms of the build. The downside is, if you do damage one of the ESCs, because all of the ESCs are on the same little PCB, then you're going to have to replace all four of them. However, they're not particularly expensive these days, so that's not a big deal. So we talked a little bit about motors there. Let's have a look at the motors. There are lots of motor choices around. I happen to like T-Motor. They're a very high-performance, high-quality motor that should last a very long time. I've gone for these here. These are the T-Motor F40 Pro. Now, there is a couple of numbers that you need to be aware of with motors like this. One of the main ones is the KV number. Lower the KV, the bigger batteries will be supported. So something like these F40 Pro 2440 KV units, I have four of these, are going to work perfectly with a 4S battery. And a 4S battery is going to be about 16 odd volts. So when you're buying motors, do make sure that they're matched for the battery voltage that you intend to use. Lots of modern racing quadcopters will use 6S batteries, which are much higher voltage, 25 odd volts. However, for a regular first build, I'd recommend going for 4S like I am here. And something like a 2440 kV set of motors like this is going to work perfectly. We need four, obviously one for each arm. You can get them with right hand and left hand orientation. These are all identical, so they can go on either arm and we'll kind of play around with them when it's all put together to make them spin the right way for the thing to fly. On top of those motors, we need some props. These are the props that I've got here. Again, these are pretty standard kind of five inch props and they will work great. The only other thing that I do have here is something to turn this into an FPV quadcopter, and that's this thing here. This just happens to be a Walksnell unit. There are lots of different versions of FPV or first-person view around. Again, for those of you that don't know, first-person view is where you can put goggles on and look out of a camera that's mounted inside the model. So essentially, it looks like you're sat in the model flying it from a seat at the front. Older analog FPV is far cheaper. However, with modern HD systems, you have a choice of either DJI, Walksnail, which is what I've got here, or things like HD Zero. I'm going to build this one with Walksnail, but in the bit that we're talking about FPV, I will talk about how to do analog stuff too. So in addition to all those pieces, there are a couple of extra bits that you're going to need. First of all is you are going to need some kind of radio control radio. I'll probably use my Radio Master TX16S in this series. However, you don't need to spend that much money. You can get much smaller radios for much less cash. See my reviews for those options. You're also going to need a receiver that binds to the radio that talks either something called SBUS or CRSF. Those are the protocols that go from the little receiver into the flight controller and tell the flight controller how you're moving the sticks and switches on the radio so that it can take appropriate action and make the drone or UAV fly in the way that you want. We are going to need a LiPo battery for this. Uh, again, we're going with a 4S setup because that is the KV of the motors that we've kind of plumped for. I would recommend for something like this, anything between a 1300 to a 2200 4S battery is going to be perfect. Last thing we're going to need then is we're going to need some basic soldering tools and some basic soldering skills. A soldering iron is an investment in the hobby. Don't worry if you've never sold it before. I have a video and I'll link it down below. You can go and watch that. If you have a half decent soldering iron, you have some decent solder and something like one of these practice boards, I would recommend buying some of these because they're great. You can practice your soldering on this kind of PCB style stuff. So the first time you ever solder isn't going to be on a flight controller where potentially you're going to make a mess of something. And finally, you need some basic tools, things like uh, hex wrenches or Allen keys and some little screwdrivers and other pieces too. So if you have all that stuff and you have the kind of stuff that we've just gone through on the bench, you're kind of ready to build a quadcopter. 
So join me in the subsequent videos where in the next one we will flash the flight controller and then we'll set up the radio and connect the receiver and make sure that that bit is all working and then we can do the power system and then plug it all together and finally we'll have the FPV stuff. So again, links to the series down below if you want to follow along. If you have any questions and you're not sure about anything, pop it in a comment and I'll do my best to dispel some of the confusion. Thank you for watching the video. If you watch my videos and find them useful, then please take a moment to hit the like and subscribe button. It helps the channel a lot. If you really like what I'm doing here, you can become a Patreon and support the time I spend helping others and get access to lots of exclusive benefits. Link is in the video description. Remember that all the videos on the channel are organized into playlists, so you can easily use those playlists to find all the videos on a subject that you are interested in. Add Painless360 to your searches on Google and YouTube, and it'll help you find my content for any particular topic. Thanks again for watching, and as always, happy flying.